So if you want to find the sine of half of an angle, what you can do is, if you know the cosine of the full angle, all you have to do is substitute it here in this formula. So we're going to be using the unit circle, using angles that we're familiar with, like the 30, 45, 60, 90, and multiples of those. Cosine, same thing. If you want to find half of the angle, say like 22.5, you could use cosine of 45, which is one that we know on the unit circle. And the same thing with tangent. Tangent, you can see, has two different formats here that you can use. So there's a question sometimes that comes up about this plus or minus, and we'll talk about that in a minute, whether to know whether you use the positive or the negative. So just hold on to that for a minute. So let's go over here to some examples. So here we're going to find out what's the secant of half of theta, one half theta. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to complete this right triangle by finding the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we've got that. Now we don't have a formula for secant of the half angle, but we have cosine, and we know that cosine and secant are reciprocals of one another. So this is going to be 1 over the cosine of theta divided by 2, okay, which equals, okay, now in this case we have the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta, which over here you can see cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 8 tenths, which is uh, four-fifths if we reduce, all divided by two. So that's basically it, but now you're going to want to do some arithmetic to simplify that. So here, let me see if I can show you that. So it's one over, one is five over five, plus four over five would give you nine over five. Okay, divided by two, which is like multiplying by one-half. Okay, so this is one over the square root of nine divided by the square root of ten. Okay, and if we take the reciprocal, that equals the square root of 10 over the square root of 9, which is 3. So there we go, we have an exact answer. Okay, now this one you can see, this would be in the first quadrant. X is positive, Y is positive. If we take half of that angle, okay, half that angle, you're still going to be in the first quadrant. The cosine is still positive. This is going to be positive square root 10 over 3. Remember we were talking about the plus or minus. Now this one, cotangent of theta divided by 2, tangent of theta divided by 2, we can use this formula here, but cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so I'm just going to flip that over. So this is the sine of theta over 1 minus the cosine of theta. Sine of theta we know is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 6 over 10. And 1 minus the cosine of theta, which is 8 over 10, okay, adjacent over hypotenuse. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, just to clear these denominators, if I distribute, I get 6, 10 minus 8, so I'm just distributing, and that gives you 6 divided by 2, which equals 3. Okay, now let's go to this one here next. We want to simplify this expression, square root of 1 plus cosine 4x divided by 2. So which one of these formulas does that look like? plus, so it looks like this one, so it's the cosine half angle formula. So what this is going to be, we're just going to substitute theta in for theta here on the left. Those are identical, so we have cosine of 4x divided by 2. Of course, 4 divided by 2, those reduce, so this is just going to be the cosine of 2x. Okay, so we simplified, we condensed that using the half angle formula. Okay, last two examples. We want to find the sine of 112 degrees in 30, what's that symbol? Minutes, right? And remember, there's 60 minutes in a degree, so this is really like saying 112.5 degrees. This is a half degree. Okay, so now this is not one that we know on the unit circle, so we're going to go to our sine half angle formula, and we recognize that this is half of 225, one that we are familiar with on the unit circle. So let's go ahead and use the sine half angle formula. And let's just look at this here for a moment on the unit circle. So 225 is right here. Is sine positive or negative in the third quadrant? It's negative. So does that mean we use the negative? Well, 112.5 degrees is gonna be here in the second quadrant. Sine is positive in the second quadrant. So we're interested in where this angle is, not where this angle is. So we're not interested in where 225 is, we're interested in where 112 and a half is, and sine is positive in that second quadrant. So we're gonna use the positive one. 
That's an important uh, point to pay attention to. So positive 1 minus the cosine of 225 divided by 2. And then if we simplify this, let's see here, let me make a little bit more room. Cosine of 225 equals square root 2 over 2. Okay, and that's going to be negative. So this is 1 minus a negative square root 2 over 2 divided by 2. Okay. Now what you can do is you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 because that's just like multiplying this whole expression by 1. And if you distribute, you clear the denominator. So this is going to be 2 plus root 2 over 4. You can split this up into two square roots, square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator. So that's going to be square root of 2 plus square root of 2 all over the square root of 4, but square root of 4 is 2. So there's our final answer. Now, you might be thinking, why couldn't we just do this on our calculator? I know this is 112.5 degrees, sine of 112.5, and you're done, right? But what this is, it's an exact answer. Just like when we use the unit circle with the square root 3 over 2 and the square root 2 over 2, those are exact values, uh, not approximations like the calculator is going to give you. So that's what these formulas do for you, give you that exact value. Okay, last example, cosine of 3 pi over 8. This is half of 3 pi over 4. So we go to our cosine half angle formula. We're going to put in 3 pi over 4, and we're going to simplify. So I'll just show you that one really quick here. So cosine of 3 pi over 4 is going to be, okay, so this is the square root of cosine 3 pi over 4. It's negative root 2 over 2 divided by 2. Again, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, so that gives us, gives us 2 minus root 2 all over 4. Take the square root. Of course, the square root of 4 is 2, and so we just get the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. 